Welcome to my tutorial number 19, titled Ping Not Pong, part 3. It's the third of three parts. Let's open the FLA that we used to, to make part 2. We now want to create a win-lose system. So come up here where we have some buttons and we're going to install two more buttons. One's called the win button, one's called the lose button. They're variables. Close the action script back to scene one. Select the scores layer. Lock all layers. Above the scores layer insert two layers. Doesn't matter which is which. Call one win call the other one lose lock the lose layer so the only layer that's unlocked is the win layer select that first frame and somewhere mid center we're going to make a win sign pick up your rectangle tool there's my sign Pick up my text tool, pick a color that will go on that, put in gray. I'm going to go with 23 right now, see what that looks like. Down here, you win. Go with about a, a lot bigger than that. I want it to fit in that box. There, that's a 45. Make sure it's static text and with your selection tool you win slide it into position center it up a little bit click on it make sure nothing selected selection tool grab it all modify convert to symbol it's a button and we said this was the win button w i n underscore b t n it's a button copy the win button instance of and make this the instance there lock that layer unlock the lose layer and do the same thing with a red box rectangle tool text tool same color is good. You lose. Oops. You lose. Now, it's got to be some color other than red. Put a dark color on it. Make sure it's static text. Selection tool. Put it in place. You lose. Lock that layer. Go back into the Actions panel. And we want to make both these buttons invisible. Win button. That's this win button. Period underscore visible equals false. I'm going to copy that. And right under my lose button, paste it and make this lose. So those buttons will be invisible when we first start. When do we want these signs to come back is when the basically the game is over. So open up our action panel again. Come down to the very bottom after the player ricochets the ball. Highlight that after that curly bracket and type in this code. We're now checking the player count. This player count is the count that is incremented 
up here every time the player hits the score wall and it's going to do a few things if the score is greater than or equal to 2 that means we're only going to set the 2 to test it out you can have whatever score you want but if score p count greater than equals 2 then this are things I want to take place that means you won the game first of all that win button I want to make that visible I want to return both scores to zero and I want to use that score to make my text updated so this will make the score zero this says score p underscore text period text will equal this new value which we just made zero and of course our curly bracket let's give this a try this is on this shouldn't be on and I know if I went back to my movie that says errors and mistakes with flash I'd find this one pretty easy because I think when we did this lose yeah we didn't make this a button so go back to this unlock this lose layer select the first frame I have this blue and this I want to click off make sure it's nothing selected grab my selection tool highlight it modify this to a button and it was called L O S C capital L underscore B T N now we pick up this instance name copy it paste it in here now let's try it again that's working good the first ball will hit here and count one you could make that nine and five on that X and Y faster higher that would move faster qualities test but I picked that because it hits this value here there's one for the player this time it'll be two and once it reaches two that's the limit for my game right now it'll say you win you win we need to put the same code in should the house win so I'm going to lock all my layers again go into my action code we have the lose invisible so let's come down here and similar to this we want to make the house have a win meaning you lose so copy this copy that click right here after this curly bracket insert a line paste it and change this P to an H and change this win to lose test in the movie I know it's going to hit this the second one will allow the player one to win and the win sign should come up but I had one concern and I can't start again okay yes I gotta in my start button I gotta remove this these so go back to scene one go back to your actions panel and up copy this line here it's a good one just copy this line go up into your start button and somewhere in the start button right here be a good spot after ball released paste this line and change the true to false so each time we press the start button when the game's over 
we don't have these two. Copy this again. Select the end. Insert a line. Paste it. And change the win to lose. I'd like to test it out and let the house win. But the way the ball bounces now, it's always going to let the player, this player win. So I'm going to go into wall 7, where wall 7 gets hit. What we need to do is not let these four things take place when it hits the the uh, score side for when the player gets points. So select right here, this first line after this one here. Put a backslash and then the asterisk. Come down to the end of this fourth line. Asterisk, backslash. This code will not be used, and therefore the player can never get any score. Let's test this out. I want to leave the. I want to leave the house win. So even if it hits that score, area, it's just going to bounce off. This won't get it. No, this is the longest part of the. I'm going to. That's why I only have it set at two to win. So I can test it out. We can put that any value you want. So there's one point for the house and the start button comes back. All I want to see is if that lose sign comes up and if we can indeed start another game. I think it was the next the next hit. I think this one gets it. And hopefully the lose sign comes up. You lose and we can start another game. That's good. There's a few more things we gotta do to make it a bit more random. So go up here where we have the ball position coming on 200 of the x-axis. Remove that 200 and type in this. It's a math random. It's capital M, A T H period, small r a n d o m, open and close bracket. This is the asterisk, the multiply sign. And how this works is the math random generates a number from 0 to 1. If it generates a 0, that's the lowest you can generate. Multiply 0 by 100, so you get 0, and add 255. So the lowest number I can get is 255, so that would put it somewhere at this axis, because it's 550 long. On the other hand, if the math random generated a 1, which is the highest it can generate, I'd multiply it by 100, which would make it 100 and add 255 would make it 355 and put the ball over here. We're going to we're going to do the same thing for the y axis instead of being stuck at 300, which is down here. Type in this, the same rules, and this means that the y axis is going to be anywhere from 300 to 400. When it's a zero, the math number will be a zero. It'll go to th all the way to 300. When it's all the way to the one, it'll be 400. So that'll give us some, some randomness to the positioning of the ball at the beginning. We're going to do something similar with the speeds, which are fixed now at nine and five. I did that so the ball would move relatively fast because we had to watch it so often. But these two lines of code, you're going to change to the math random way. And this gives me a speed of between 2 and 4 going across the stage. And it gives me a speed of 1 and 2 coming down the stage. Let's go back down to the bottom and straighten out what we left off, what we did down here. 
this area for wall 7 we have to get rid of that asterisk and slash and that asterisk and slash it will verify or auto format and I believe we have the game over let's just test it once more let's see how slow that is that's probably too slow let's go back to the action script and what we want to do is change these so let's make these uh, four and five and three and five. So it'll move across the stage faster than it'll move up and down. Let's test this out. That's a little faster. There, we got a point already for the player one. You could put a block back and forth similar to this and make a tween on it and have it go back and forth in front of the net so that it could stop the ball. I hope this hits here because then we'll see if the game ends. No, it hasn't ended yet. You might want them a lot faster than that. That's going to end the game right there. Game over, you win. I suggest you make these faster, but that's up to you. I hope you learned something from this tutorial, and I hope you use what you learn.